an almost completely inconspicuous male oven bird is about to perform. Proud and confident, he walks up the limb while belting out his notable song. Even the little warblers are filling up this section of forest blue and sweet girl have decided to nest in. The warm air and singing birds is nice, but June days often get a little rain shower at some point, giving the plants and trees what they need to grow new leaves. It also helps insect eating birds like the black and white warbler. As I record at some of the rain, my little buddy Hermoso dropped by for a few minutes. Bye Hermoso! I also saw the gray jay pair for a little while. I tried tricking them by closing my fists, but they weren't fooled. Bella normally pries my fingers apart with her bill. Where is it? You gonna pry my fingers open? Like you did yesterday? <laughs> Not really, huh? Good girl. I bet they thought I was a bit of a pest doing that. Shortly after, Bud, a chickadee, came by. I hadn't seen him for a little while. His mate wasn't with him, so he obviously must have been busy courting and building a nest. Bud gave me some lovely chickadee dee calls. I've known him for something like eight or nine years. His territory is roughly a half a kilometer squared. Although chickadees look very similar to one another, I know who Bud is due to behavior and certain calls only he makes. Plus, this is his territory. You won't see other male chickadees here unless during winter when juveniles hang around, and then it's easy to know who Bud is because he dominates the younger birds. A little while after, Bud ended up going to a tree and started making the Hey Sweetie call. Minnie Tim, another male whose territory borders buds, started using the call too. They got a little close at one point, but all went well and they ended up going on their own way. The whole time they were singing back and forth to each other, a young blue jay that I've never named because I don't know him well, dropped by and seemed to watch the interaction between the two chickadees. I saw the oven bird again today on my way to Blue and Sweet Girl. He did a little bit of foraging on the ground. This is the first time I've been lucky enough to see this bird up close and for a long duration. It blends well into the ground and foliage, very easy to lose him. Normally I only see juvenile oven birds in fall and it's for a moment. This guy's obviously taken up residency here. I enjoy watching him. While recording the oven bird, Blue came by, so I put some peanuts down for him to collect and hide away. I'm not going to bother Sweet Girl today. Just let her do the nesting thing. On my way out, I saw a black and white warbler. Every time I pass through the last few days, I see him. Must be his area. Out just a little further, Tuffy and Bella stop by for some cat kibble. They don't stick around for too long, though. I'd say they got a nest full of babies somewhere in these woods. Come on, Bella. Come on. Ready. Girl. My last stop before calling it a day was at the border between Feisty Jay and Hermoso's area. They cross each other's paths frequently. It can get a little emotional, but for the most part, they just avoided one another this time. The day started off with a nice magnolia warbler and Feisty Jay and Blue, too, who were doing their best to behave and not get into a fight with one another. Snowy's mate Bo was here as well and making sure to keep his distance. Smart thing to do since this isn't his territory. Blue Jays aren't really territorial like other birds, it's kind of odd how it works for them. They often cross into each other's territories, but not so much when it's spring and they are breeding. It seems that during this season there is a line that each do not cross over. Wintertime, though, they come and go wherever, but they do fight for space from one another, and this can change from day to day, or moment to moment. For a week, I've been hearing a common yellow throat, and this time I decided to go see if I could catch a glimpse of it, and I did. This is probably my second or third time ever seeing one. Then a little while after, I saw a Wilson's warbler. 
another one I haven't seen in a while. Tuffy and Bella, the Canada J pair, visited me again. I guess the babies are getting older, allowing them more time to go out around. On my way up to see Blue and Sweet Girl, I spotted the oven bird. He found some grub, which Blue tried to nab from him. Up just a little bit, I stopped to see Sweet Girl. She took a moment to get some preening in before returning to the nest. I wonder how many eggs she laid. My day started off with Tuffy and Bella and Blue, who waited in the back until they were done collecting some cat kibble. Want some blue? Gray Jays and Blue Jays don't really like each other much, and Grays seem to dominate the Blue Jays. <laughs> hey, Tuffy. Today, when I visited Sweet Girl's nest area, she came out for a bit, collected some food, and hid it away for later feeding. After she was done, she made her way back to the nest. Now it was time to check on the oven bird. It seems lately that he has gotten used to me and doesn't shy away as much. Still cautious, but not as hard to get videos of. Fun watching him going around. I stayed out only for a short while today, but made sure to check on that common yellow throat I saw the other day and was glad to see him. Really neat looking little bird. And finally, at the last leg of my trip, I saw Hoppy and her mate and gave them some leftover supper. They liked that. It's an early morning out, and Blue and Feisty Jay are the first. They tolerated each other fairly good, but I think that was only because they weren't quite on each other's territory. I put some mixed peanuts and stuff on the nearby rock and let them go to town. Besides his markings, color, and other little features, it's no trouble to tell who Feisty Jay is because he's the only one who manages to take two whole peanuts every time. Hermoso showed up by this point too and joined in. People often wonder how I can tell these jays apart and I did make a video explaining how I do a couple of years ago. I'm going to leave a link to it down in the description. I was in the area where I've been seeing the common yellowthroat so as the jays collected some food I went to see if I could find him and I did. I guess it's his territory. I spotted a hermit thrush nearby too. And then a ruby crown kinglet. There is a lot of bird activity lately. It's nice seeing them. I was surprised to see Fiona. She came by for a very brief few moments. On my way home, Snowy came by too. It was really nice seeing her because it's been a while. All the male jays were here together today. Feisty Jay took first dibs on the peanuts. Hermosa waited nearby, and Bo stayed back, but started making his way toward. Feisty Jay got a little ticked off when the other two tried getting some peanuts. I guess he figures they're all his. Just as Hermosa was about to grab some food, Blue booted him out of it. It's just the way they operate. Everyone got a bit of food though. Well, kind of. Feisty Jay ended up booting Hermosa out of it too. At least he got something. And now he can just rest on my tripod watching the others. For the most part, they all get along pretty well. I haven't been reporting much about Hatch and Maggie. I've been visiting them only briefly, so I didn't record much videos of their nest hole progression. It is complete now and Maggie is inside incubating the eggs. It's no trouble to tell when a red-breasted nuthatch nest is in use because there will be a fresh coating of tree resin around the hole. Maggie came out and joined Hatch in collecting some peanuts I had brought. I spotted a male hairy woodpecker nearby. I know it's a male due to the red patch on its head. Females don't have that. Wanting to get some videos, I put some peanuts on the log for Hatch and Maggie. 
He was busily working at a tree down low on the base. They're pretty cool to watch. After Maggie was done and back in her nest, I left. My last stop was Sweet Girl's area. Girl, sweet girl. I had some nuts for her. She flickered her wings like a baby bird because Blue was here too. Mama girl. I'm not sure why she does that when he is there, but I think it's something to do with her wanting to be able to collect food without him taking over. Normally, that's what he does, but when she flickers her wings, he won't. You're blue. So I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe it means something else. All I know is that they are pretty interesting birds to be around. Today started off with an emotional Snowy and her mate Bo. There was other Jays around, that's why they were upset. Snowy didn't stay long at all though. She should have nestlings in the nest by now. I'd say they're getting pretty big. While here, Lentil and her mate came by too. I don't see Lentil often lately since she started nesting. It was really nice to see her. On my way towards Sweet Girl's area, I heard a Ruby Crown Kinglet and Golden Crown Kinglet alarm calling. Tuffy and Bella seem to be the reason. The little ones must have a nest nearby, causing them to do this. Grey Jays will eat the eggs and nestlings of other birds should they come across a nest. I'm certain there was one around because both the female and male Ruby Crown Kinglet were mobbing the Grey Jays. Not wanting to cause any problems for them in case there is a nest, I had the jays follow me. Further in, I saw Blue hunting some insects. He seemed pretty full. I guess him and Sweet Girl must have nestlings now because he's been really busy these last few days. For the first time in a few years, I had the opportunity to record a hermit thrush singing. A later start today, and a short one. I see Fiona pretty much every time that I come out here. Her and her mozo collected some food that I had. A bird I haven't recorded singing in a few years is the fox sparrow. Not the best video, but glad to have it. They really built out a loud song. The dandelions are out now, which is nice because the bumblebees are making appearances. I went to see how Hatch and Maggie were and gave them some peanuts. Always enjoyable watching them happily topping up their pantry. As evening approached, the golden sunlight hit the nearby new leaves, backlighting them. It seems work for the nuthatches runs well into late evening. Hatch busily reapplied tree resin to the nest hole entrance. It has to be maintained because rain washes it away and sunlight dries it up. It is thought that red-breasted nuthatches put resin around the entrances to keep insects like ants out, and possibly even predators like squirrels. I'm glad to have a recording of this, it's something I rarely get time to witness. I don't know what is going on with Hatch, but he doesn't come to me the last couple of days. Oddly enough, Maggie doesn't allow him to go around her or the nest. I'm confused and don't know what happened. Everything was fine just a day ago. I never got any good close-ups of him. He's always far away and I can't make out for certain that it's Hatch. It has to be though. Is he sick and Maggie is picking up on that, causing her to keep him away? It's so strange that he won't come to me anymore. The following days after, I never saw Hatch anymore, and no other male either. This is heartbreaking. My little buddy since 2014. How will Maggie raise those babies alone? Come on, Bella. It's a nice morning today. Bella and Tuffy drop by for some cat kibble. I wonder how their nestlings are doing. Feisty Jay came by for some morsels of food. The Jays here are so accustomed to my tripod, it's just another tree to them, I guess. Good boy! I've been seeing this tan morph white-throated sparrow pretty much every time I come out. 
It's in the border between Feisty J and Hermoso. It has a mate who is a little more cautious of me. It wasn't long before I found Blue. He was preoccupied with preening his feathers. It is the beginning stages of molting. Although his feathers are bothering him and need tending to, it don't stop him from letting other males know their place when in his company. Squeaky gate calls may look and sound comical, but it's the male's way of expressing their mood to one another. And of course, Blue always has time to come see me. Hi, Blue. And even if I don't immediately Hi, give him a peanut, he's fine with sticking around and preening his feathers. What a nice show of trust. Haven't seen Little Speck, a boreal chickadee I've known for years very much since breeding kicked in. It's nice that he came by for a moment. One of the great things about the Blue Jays being so used to me and knowing that they can trust me is when they forget for a moment that I'm here and go about doing things naturally, like Feisty Jay here collecting insects to feed his nestlings this morning. I'd say they will be fledging soon. Hey, Squawky! Squawky came by, which was very nice. Hadn't seen him in a while. Even his mate was here. Their babies must be getting close to fledging. It was nice seeing him feed her. On my way into Sweet Girl and Blues, I saw a little yellow rumped warbler sing. Blue dropped by the nest to feed the babies, but I couldn't see them. They built their nest in a well covered spot. On my way out, I saw a female nuthatch that I haven't seen in a while. I never did name her. Hatch used to be with her for a very short period before going back with Maggie last year. Fiona was one of the first Jays to greet me today. For almost two weeks now, I've been seeing only her and no Hermoso. This kills me. Hermoso means the world to me. I was by his side several years back when he was gravely ill. He bounced back from that and was a different Jay. He learned to trust me a great deal. I love that Jay. I keep hoping that he's just busy or I'm out here at the wrong times. Over the past couple of days, I've been seeing a blue-headed viral pair. Really neat looking birds. I stopped by to see Maggie and gave her some peanuts. Girl. I was surprised to see that her babies have fledged. She fed one of them on a limb. Amazing that she was able to achieve this. Of course, Hatch's contribution in the beginning certainly helped. I'm not sure how many she has, but I did see a few. Add a girl, Maggie. Good job. The best Squawky and his mate. Squawky and his mate and Snowy and Bo were the first Jays today. I think they have fledglings nearby. I'm not going to bother looking for them, though. Blue is busy every time I see him hunting insects. I'd say the babies will fledge soon. Since I was in the area of been seeing the common yellowthroat, I went hoping to catch a glimpse and I did. He's still actively singing. The foliage on the trees have come in nicely. Flies are making their appearance a lot now too. Sweet Girl doesn't spend time in the nest much the last couple of days. The babies must be too big and nearing fledging. It's usually 19 to 21 days after hatching that Blue Jays fledge. I wonder how many they have. While with her, I noticed a toad. It was creeping its way up the hill. Neat creatures. On my way home, I stopped to check on the big old apple tree. Looks to be in good bloom. Today's first hungry buddy was a tan morph white-throated sparrow. It kept coming back for more peanuts. Must be run ragged. Maybe. Lentil and her mate were here as well. Been a while and they have some adorable fledglings.
Snowy was here as well and not too happy with another blue jay. Her mate Bo came to the rescue though, easing her anxieties. It's very warm today. Snowy's warm. This causes the birds to open their bills to promote heat loss by fluttering their neck muscles, kind of like panting. Blue and Sweet Girl were close to their nest, and even though in the shade of the forest, it was still very warm. So much so that Blue not only had his bill open, but also extended his wings down, allowing circulating air to reach his hot skin and lower body temperature. No signs of fledglings yet. On my way back home, I saw Nova. Being a little while, I bet her babies are close to fledging now too. The last bird I saw was one of the white-throated sparrows, but I never had any peanuts left, so instead I gave it some seeds, which it seemed fine with. After a couple of days of hot weather, it finally rained. I started off at Blue and Sweet Girls and was surprised to see Mr. and Mrs. here, which stirred up some emotions between them all. I love how the pair stick by each other's partners. Mr. and Mrs. didn't stick around for long. That was when I discovered Blue and Sweet Girls' newly fledged babies. It seems that everyone has fledglings now, but Blue and Sweet Girls are the first ones I've been able to see. They have a long ways to go to get down with the rest of the babies. I don't know if they will be able to anytime soon. Fiona has to take care of hers on her own because Hermoso hasn't been seen in a few weeks. I wonder how she will do. Maggie seemed to do well with her babies on her own since losing Hatch. How sad all of this is. Nature is rough. I'm happy to see the females beating the odds and I wish them nothing but the best of luck with it all. So how will they do? Will I get to know some of the babies, including Hermoso and Fiona's? Stay tuned for more on the intimate and secretive lives of these jays and other birds. Thanks for watching. Take care. Happy birding.